here I am back in my garden and ready to complete part two of the drawing of landscape in the garden using watercolour pencils. So as you'll know in the previous lesson we got the backgrounds done, got the shapes in, the general composition in and got the colours in everywhere to give us a background colour in the appropriate shades and today we'll be moving on to adding the detail. So first thing you need to do is get all your equipment ready. So you'll need a variety of different colours of pencils, more than one shade of each colour preferably, a sharpener, pot of water, variety of brushes. Settle yourself down in front of the view you did before. Make sure the lighting is similar that, as it was the first time you started your drawing. No point doing it in shades now if you did it in full sunlight last time. General rule with any drawing or painting is that you start with the background, though this isn't always the case and I'll come back to that later. The main part of the background for my drawing is obviously the bricks. And although bricks are a man-made uh, material, they're not one colour. In fact, bricks are specifically made to have a variety of colours in them. And no one colour in your palette is going to be right for what you want. So it's very important that you mix your colours as you go along. One side of your wall may be in more shade than the other side, so you may have a whole side of the wall that is darker shades than the other. In my case, both, both edges of the wall have got full sunlight on them. You'll remember that last week I did this orange background colour for the bricks, but I drew in the perspective lines. That means that this week it's very easy to get the lines to follow the direction they should to give them a really good looking of perspective and disappearing off towards the vanishing point. But I won't have to paint in between the bricks the lighter colour of the pointing. There are obviously a lot of bricks to do and that can get a bit boring so you can always move on to a different bit of your drawing and then come back to the bit you haven't finished later. So if you're bored of bricks move on to pots or guttering as you go and then you can come back to them later. Try and remember dark and light. So if you're colouring something in, particularly something very dark like guttering, look to see which side is the darkest and you can get that side in darker. On the watering can here, the bit towards me is the lightest bit, so the left and the right of the watering can are darker. And I'm going to show that they're darker, not just by using a slight, a little addition of black to the darker areas, but also by pressing harder with my grey crown. Another way to make things look really 3D is to get the shadows underneath them. So you'll see I've put some shadow under the watering can and under the pot. So my paving slabs follow the perspective as well. And although I can see a dark eye outline around each paving slab, I am not going to use black to go around these details at all. Black is a very harsh colour and should be avoided as much as possible. And you can usually get some really nice darks with some dark blues or dark browns. Um, and again mixing a variety of colours. So I said earlier that we usually get all the background in before we do any detail but there are exceptions. So for instance these plants which are in front of the brick wall their green colour will not show over the top of the dark browns of the bricks and therefore I need to get them in now. I can't just go around them because you need the spontaneity of the way you just draw the streaks up for each leaf and therefore I do need to get them in before I finish the brick, brick walls behind them. And this is simply because watercolour paints and watercolour crayons are translucent so they will show the colour through. Try and make sure you mix up a variety of greens for the different uh, vegetation and you will notice by looking really carefully that that's how we see one plant against the other. Not just the texture and the size of the leaves but the actual shades of green. You can of course add a nice dark Prussian blue to get some darker greens and a nice light green or yellow to get your lighter colours. And this will also help to give you a really 3D effect in your um, plant forms that you're drawing. Sometimes certain areas of your picture which are bordering each other, so in this instance it's the soil and the stones, will be very similar in colour and it is the texture that shows them apart. So my stones bordering this part of the garden were very, very similar in colour to the soil that they were bordering, but they were very different in texture. So I've tried to get the texture and the roughness of the soil by using a more scribbly technique with my pencil on the soil. But when I come to my colour mixing, I don't need to be quite as scribbly because this colour is going to blend into it. You can use... Um, a small amount of black in things like soil if you need to but try and keep it to a real minimum remember it gets stronger when you add the water the 
fun bit of any picture is always the little details. So make sure you really look for the tiny things, crack things growing between the cracks of the pavement or tiny plants growing up the wall because these are going to be some of the more interesting and inspirational things to, to draw. And as I said earlier, if you get bored of drawing some of your details, you can give yourself a break and draw the more interesting things as you go along. The purple of these irises is already going against an orange. So I need to make sure that I get these de details in nice and firmly, really pressing hard with my pencil to get that cover colour to cover up on top of the orange. And uh, looking carefully all the time, not just looking at your, what, at your drawing, but making sure you're looking very carefully to the object that you are drawing. Make sure you look for your shadows, your areas of light and dark, and nothing should be the same colour all over. It should all have some variety in it, depending on uh, which direction the sun is coming from. But almost all objects will have shade at the base, so you can get that um, those darker shades in, and that will help to make your objects look more 3D. Uh, sometimes when you're drawing, you'll realise that you've missed out an entire area. So in this picture, as you can see at the base of the drain pipe here, I've forgotten to draw in anything at all. There's no details at all. And so I need to look very carefully back and see what it is I've missed out. And in this instance, it was some rambling weeds that were coming up from the bottom there. Uh, keep your black light because, it, as I said earlier, it's a very strong colour. So when you've got most of your colouring in, you can start to add your water to your watercolour crayons and giving yourself a, a more of a painted effect. You need to use the right size brush for the job and for the little details I'm using a very thin brush here. If I want to add in some darks I can scribble onto a piece of background or a piece of scrap and pick that paint up to spread on my picture separately. It's up to you to choose how runny you do it so for these paving slabs it's nice to get it really wet and let the colours bleed out but for around the leaves I do not want the colours to be too watery or they could end up going over the top of my details of my leaves. You can add more colouring to your picture after wetting it, but you must let it dry in between. Because of the speeded up version of this film, you couldn't see that, but I took the picture away, actually dried it with a hairdryer so that I could come back to it, or you can come back to it later. So a little bit of appraisal, and I can see that I didn't do enough bricks in my first um, attempt, and I need to go back and put some more details in. You don't need to draw in every brick or every crack in a pavement but you need to get a feel for it you need to get the idea of what is going on so if you notice you haven't got enough come back and add, add those details in likewise with these irises when i looked again i realized that the color i'd chosen wasn't quite right so happy to go back and add some darker shades of purple to really blend into those irises and again these little details are the fun bits too any drawing so don't uh, rush over them make sure you spend time on them make sure you pick out the details and if you've altered your color when you come back and add your water that will help those colors to blend but you don't want them always to blend completely sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of darker and light, lighter streaks in in your painting you can adjust colors i found my soil was too brown so i'm adding some grays in there and this area of the painting hasn't had any water at all I'd uh, had a little break from my painting and then came back to finish this bit off later. So I've quite enjoyed the technique of getting one bit watercoloured in and then coming back to it. So provided you do dry it completely in between, and as I say, the editing of this film doesn't let you see that, but I've taken it away, got it really dry or left it for half an hour before carrying on. And so when I come back and add extra crayons, my picture is completely dry at that stage. If you don't let it dry out, the crayons behave very differently. So again, a little bit of appraisal, realising I do need a few more bricks in, even though I won't want to get them all in. It needs a little bit more. Too, too much light orange going on, so it's seeing that even though I don't want to do the details of the bricks, I need to get some darker colours in, otherwise my uh, palette is looking a little bit off. The texture on the leaves can vary from plant to plant. The texture can be enhanced by the way you use your paintbrush. So if you've added texture in a certain way with your crayons, try and mirror that texture when you come to crayon them in. Do not just go blankly over the whole area, but pick out the leaves and texture 
bit by bit, so a little flicky motion of your paintbrush can really help. Here, where I added the blue crown to the pot, it wasn't quite dry, and so the crown has gone on much harder, and this is what I was trying to advise you against doing. It's going to take me a while to finish this picture, so I think I'm going to sign off now and leave you to finish yours at your leisure. Enjoy yourselves, and if you want to check out the written part of the lesson on my website, andreafarndonsartworks.co.uk, feel free, and I'll see you with my next lesson. Bye.